Hey, how are y'all today? Glad y'all are here. Something I wanted to go over today and talk about, that would be the floods in North Carolina, East Tennessee, um, in those areas. That is something that is, that is just devastating to those people. So the first thing we need to do, the best thing you can do is pray. So pray for those people. And some people say, well, all I can do is pray. Well, that's the best thing you can do is pray because God listens to your prayers, okay? So just pray is the first thing to do. The next thing you can do is if you're in an area or able, go volunteer, go help. If you can't do that, maybe you can contribute to an, contribute to an agency that can help, like Samaritan's Purse. There's a lot of other organizations. Those people can help. I know Samaritan's Purse is a great organization. I have dealt with them firsthand uh, on a, the project here in our community where the tornado went through in 2021. And it was an EF4 destroyed the town and went through several miles in this area and destroyed a lot of homes and a lot of lives. A lot of loss of life there too. But Samaritan's Purse was here within 24 hours and they began to start efforts of cleaning up and helping at that point that is a good organization and there's a lot of others out there and i'll try to leave a list of those that i have worked with that i personally know that do uh, a great job and i think you can do your research find some other ones that do a great job where they put all that money into that effort to help those people i'm just going to tell you the government don't count on the government fema was here they arrived a lot later some of these organizations other organizations did they may have been on the ground but they didn't do any good until later and they didn't do a lot of good then they provided some housing for some people temporarily i didn't deal with those people a lot but i've talked to some people that had to deal with with fema and i'm just going to tell you it just it wasn't great do not count on your government do not count on your federal government to come help you do not count on fema do not count on even your state and local governments helping to a great extent because they've only got so many resources. What you can rely on is each other. What you can rely on is these other organizations, brothers and sisters, fellow countrymen, fellow Christians that come in to help and give a lending hand to people to help. And some of these organizations have been in our community since 2021 and they just left and they haven't completely left yet, but their main effort has stopped now, and it's 2024. So they've been in our area three years. They stayed here. They helped. They have been a great help to this community. And I'm just going to tell you the outpouring of people coming into a place that has been devastated by something like this, it, it just gives hope. I know that when, when those people started pouring into this area, that that feeling of helplessness and hopelessness left. Some of these places were here before 24 hours were up. They were in, knocking on doors. They were trying to help people, providing tarps. People had lost everything. They, they were there to help. And they were genuine and they were God sent, I'm gonna tell you. So don't count on your government. Count on your neighbors and your friends. You can count on those. But you also need to be able to count on yourself. I know from two different experiences we've had here with some major uh, disasters, one with an ice storm in 2009, where it was a widespread area and power was out for hundreds of thousands of people. And we were out without power for like 24 days. So we had to provide for ourselves. We had to make sure, thank goodness, it was in the winter but thank goodness the temperatures were not cold enough for that episode. Could have been a lot worse with a lot of uh, deaths from the cold. We managed to survive those 24 days without electricity. Uh, we survived about three days without water because the power out and they didn't have any backup for the water. You need to count on yourself. You need to rely. If you think you can run to the grocery store and get things and something like this, it's, it's not going to happen. If you've never been through a natural disaster, let me tell you something. You can't do that. You can't even go buy gas. You can stand in gas lines. I know during the ice storm, we sat in gas lines for an hour or two, and they were trying to limit 
that gas so everybody could get a little bit and they would limit you to five or ten gallons of gas and we would have to drive an hour and 50 minutes to get things so we had enough gas in our vehicle we could do that go get supplies get things that we needed at a different location because the roads weren't damaged but in a case like this flood roads are wiped out i mean this flood the river in Asheville was 10 over 10 foot above major flood stage they have not had this kind of flooding since 1791 when it was at 26 feet above the flood stage. It got to 26.6 feet above flood stage. In the areas like this, mountainous areas, hill regions and things, you have the you have the, the hills and you have the valleys and all that water from the hills are running down to those valleys. So it's not just raising water, it's running water. And I don't know how much you know about the force of water, but I know that if you get one or two foot of running water that that's enough to bring you down if you step off into it. So that swept away houses, businesses, vehicles, everything, and people. So that, that flooding was just devastating. So you can't prepare for everything, but you need to prepare the best you can for what you got. The number one thing you need is water. You can survive 27, 28, 30 days without food, but you can only go three or four days without water. Water is the number one thing you need to make sure you have access to, stored up, something handy that you can travel if you have to. If you're in an area where you think you may have to leave, be able to take water with you. If you can't take anything else, take some water with you. The next thing, of course, is going to be food. So store up as much food as you can. Again, have some that is packable. You can throw into a backpack or already having a backpack where you can leave if you need to an area. You need to be prepared. You need to be prepared to stay where you're at if you can. But if you can't, you also need to be prepared to leave. So you need to have things ready, accounted for, know where they're at, know where that you can get to them fast, load them in a vehicle and get out if you need to. People in Florida right now are leaving because of the hurricane that's coming in towards then. And they're going to some place that the hurricane is not going to hit. But I guarantee they're taking a few things with them. So if you had a major disaster hit, hurricanes, you know they're coming. It may be only a few days advance. You may not know what it's bringing, but you've got a couple of days to know it's coming. A tornado, you may only have minutes. Earthquake, you have no time at all. That hits, you're there wherever you're at. So just be prepared. You need to... You need to stockpile some food. And if you don't have 30 days worth of food in your house, you need to get it, okay? If you need to go to the grocery and buy canned goods, buy canned goods. If you're by yourself, buy 30 cans of pork and beans. That will keep you going for 30 days if you have to. And you can eat them cold. They're not that great, but you can eat them cold. But you need to be prepared. Water, food, you need to have extra blankets, some plastic, some tarps laying around. Wouldn't hurt a thing if you had some of those stored somewhere that you could get to. But you can think of this stuff. You can go to websites and find what you need to stock up on. But my main thing is telling you, stock up something. Make a list, research some things that you need to keep, and stock something. You need to be prepared to go on your own for 30 days, okay? I don't care where you're at in the country, what you're doing, if you're in a major city, if you're out in the rural areas, if you're on a mountaintop, you're in a valley, you're on a sandbar somewhere, I don't care. Prepare for 30 days, okay? You need to get prepared for at least 30 days. And the more you can have on hand, the better you're going to be. Another thing, homesteaders. Okay, these people that are going back, like myself, going back to more sustainable ways where we can grow our own food, raise our own animals, gather our own eggs, more reliable on ourselves. Not to say that everything's part. You cannot count on everything, and no matter what you do, there's something that's going to be missing. But I'm telling you, some people are brought, drawn to this lifestyle, and there's a reason for that. 
that a lot of people, and I, I'm talking about a lot of people, are drawn to this lifestyle is because they're not only going to be providing food for themselves, they're going to be able to help their neighbors. And I think that is an important aspect of homesteading. And if you haven't, if you're a homesteader and you haven't thought of that, you need to think of that. Uh, you're going to have family that are going to need some things. You're going to have neighbors that are going to need some things, your community. So don't just stock up for yourself, okay? Put some extra up. Have some extra ready. If you're doing this, it's not going to hurt to have some extras. And if you get too much, give it away. Sell it at a farmer's market, whatever. But have some available that you can help with, that you can be an assistance to somebody else that needs help. If you're a homesteader, you're already going to have some tools and things on hand. Chainsaws, hoes, shovels, picks, axes, things like this. You need to have extra supply of gasoline on hand. Gasoline will keep for about a year. You can put an additive in there that will help it last that long. Uh, diesel fuel, if you have a tractor that runs on diesel, keep diesel fuel. Diesel will keep up to two years. There's also additives for diesel. There's just things you need to be have on hand that you can help yourself and help others with if you're a homesteader or if you're just out in the rural area or if you're in the city. Have some things that you can help yourself with. Have some things you can help others with. Be, be the person that steps up and is able to reach out a hand and help somebody up. That is what we need to do and through the tornado that we've had through here, through the ice storm that we've had through here, we have learned that we need to do that. But as time goes by, sometimes we get lax on that and so we forget those things and we let our stockpiles run down or we let something go that we shouldn't have let go and then all of a sudden something else hits and we need it. So we need to always be mindful of things that could happen. Uh, natural disasters, storms, hurricanes, tornadoes, ice storms, earthquakes, things like that can happen. We need to be ever mindful that this is not a safe world, all right? If you think it's a safe world and everything is going to be fine, you're under the wrong impression, okay? And if you think you can depend on your government to come help you, you're under the wrong impression, okay? God above is gonna help you and he's gonna give you the tools to help yourself if you'll just listen, do the things you need to do, prepare yourself as best you can. Like I said, you're not gonna have everything, but do the best you can and just pray. Always pray, pray for the people that's, that are hurting in North Carolina, the Florida and Georgia, Tennessee. You need to, need to pray, that's the, first line of defense that we've got, the first line of help that we've got is prayer. So keep that in mind, okay? And he will lead you in other things. Remember, count your blessings every day. And I believe you will find you are blessed far beyond measure. I know that I am. God bless. Bye.